This question has popped up a few times in the past because in varying circumstances, people have started discovering that with the rising price of direct current fast charging your EV, is it actually that much cheaper than gas? In fact, sometimes it may even cost more? Yet there's a lot of variables at play here because unlike gasoline fueled vehicles, EV charging can be very different costs, not just based on where you are in the country, but also just at the speed at which you charge. For instance, instance, with fast chargers, there's a lot of infrastructure required. You've got to build out that station, you got to get permitting, you got to construct it. And because they really only want people using fast chargers who need them, you know, you're on a road trip, they don't want you hanging out at the fast charger longer than required. That's why they typically charge a premium at fast charging stations compared to the electricity rates you'll get at home. Now, if you live in a place like I do, it's in fact still pretty expensive to charge from home, but most utility companies provide EV specific pricing or time of use pricing so that at least where I live if you charge after midnight electricity is a lot cheaper so at my local superchargers you may see prices range between 40 cents to 45 cents a kilowatt hour whereas at home if I'm at off-peak charging it's around 30 cents which is still not great most of the country is averaging more like 10 to 15 cents per kilowatt hour when at home but if you go in a very very busy area or an area where electricity is quite expensive this is not just a Tesla thing, you'll see it with Rivian as well. The Adventure Network, Electrify America, or Tesla will start charging north of 60 cents per kilowatt hour. And this is an important threshold to keep in mind because when electricity starts dipping into the 50 to 60 cents a kilowatt hour range, that's where it's very rarely cheaper than gasoline. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that powering your electric vehicle is objectively more expensive than gas because while gas prices may go up, you're kind of limited to whatever the price of the pump is in your town. Most people are not going to be filling up their gas vehicles from home, whereas with electric vehicles, it's close to around 80% of all charging is done right there at the same place you charge your phone at, in the garage or right outside your house if you've got an outlet available. This is why a lot of people tend to say if you can charge from home, an EV makes a lot more sense because if you're dependent on fast charging, that's going to be a lot more expensive. It's typically harder on the battery pack itself a little bit and it can be more inconvenient because of course EVs don't tend to have the same range as gas vehicles so it means you're going to be stopping and charging a lot more regularly than you would have to drive a gas vehicle to a gas pump. Also at home of course people have the option of creating their own energy as solar has been available for decades now as a way to lower your electric bill. There are many people out there who have built out solar packages that basically cover all of their driving habits so this is a fairly expensive operation not everybody has the option to because they're either renting or they live in an apartment. But that being said, I have several friends that have built out their solar packages and have power walls that are powering their Teslas, which essentially mean they drive around for free, which you're really just not going to find in any circumstance with a gasoline powered vehicle. So sure, they do pay a bit on road trips for that DC fast charging, but overall, probably 80 to 90% of their driving is covered by sunshine or it's substantially cheaper than gas because they can charge from home during off-peak pricing. But to people out there who can't afford to buy solar panels and batteries for their home or don't have a way to charge from home because they live in an apartment building or don't have a garage and they're on street parking, that's where startups like Aptera are trying to kind of combine the entire system into one super ultra-efficient vehicle where you have solar on the vehicle itself. That way you're getting solar energy everywhere you drive that thing, not just at home and at a starting price below the price of what average vehicles cost with the compromise of not having a ton of seats only two but there's still a lot of people who make do with two seaters today great for single people couples or commuter vehicles where you're putting a lot of miles on it and you need a lot of good range because the Aptera is offering 400 miles of range and as long as you live in a place with sunshine you're probably going to be getting at least a couple dozen free miles per day but of course two seaters aren't quite enough for everybody and that's where I still think there's a lot of difficult justification for even EVs, and that's with pickup trucks. It's an important segment of the market because it's one of the most popular. Some of the best-selling vehicles in the United States over the course of decades have been fairly large pickup trucks like the one you see behind me. And the problem that Ford, Rivian, GM, and Tesla are all facing when they're trying to make these all-electric pickup trucks come down to efficiency. A lot of people think it's payload capacity or towing capacity, but especially with this conversation of does buying an EV save money over the long haul versus paying for a gas-powered 
armored vehicle, it's honestly a quite difficult proposition because so many people, especially in the US, have gotten accustomed to pickup trucks becoming massive. They like these giant hoods on the front and a lot of this was motivated improperly by the EPA requiring more and more strict emission standards for smaller vehicles. So to make their lives easier, the legacy auto companies kept making trucks bigger and bigger so that they wouldn't have to abide by such strict emission standards. And sadly, that has resulted in far more dangerous vehicles that are killing more and more pedestrians every year because of their worse visibility. The pedestrians are getting hit higher and higher up on the body, which usually pushes them under the vehicle, which is far more likely to result in a death. So we already had this problem in America with pickup trucks becoming huge, but then once the electrification trend set in, everyone wanted to keep the overall size and dimensions of this dated pickup truck form factor. Even Tesla, with all of their radical outside the box rethinking of the Cybertruck, decided, well, it has to be around the same dimensions of the best-selling truck in America, which of course was the Ford F-150. But if you go outside of America, where there's still a ton of work getting done, a ton of contractors, and in many regions, pickup trucks are still the most popular vehicle segment, but these trucks are substantially smaller than the ones we have in the US. And because Tesla built the Cybertruck around the F-150 dimensions, it is just this overall massive truck. And that's a very common criticism you'll see of people who go out and test drive one. They don't mind the design. They actually think it looks pretty cool and they love the steer by wire. They love the full self-driving and the supercharger network and the somewhat bulletproof doors and the tonneau cover. There's a lot of things to love about the Cybertruck, but I have interacted with more than just a couple people who get in one, drive it around and say, you know, it's really cool, but it's just too dang big. I don't think the reason a lot of people don't go for pickup trucks is because of the practicality of them. Of course, who wouldn't want a vehicle that can do more and get more done? A lot of it comes down to, well, it's just not my style or that's just too big. I don't want to be that kind of guy that shows up having to cram my giant truck into these tiny parking spaces, especially in cities. And because of these large sizes, the efficiency on all electric trucks is typically way, way worse than most other EVs. You know, the best selling EVs in the world, like the Tesla Model Y or the Model 3, these vehicles are closer to four, sometimes five miles per kilowatt hour. And that means that whether you're paying 10 cents, 30 cents, or 50 cents a kilowatt hour, you don't have to pay nearly as much as you do for gasoline because you're getting a ton of range every kilowatt hour you pay for. And that's why, especially when you're cross shopping like a Model 3 versus any other gas powered sedan right now, try to compare it to like a Toyota Camry or a Honda Civic. And sure, maybe the upfront price will be a little bit lower than a Model 3. But once you start looking at the operating expenses between the oil changes, the gasoline, brake pad replacements, and then you've got an engine to maintain, that means head gaskets, transmission, timing belts. That's an issue I'm having right now with my old gas car. It's in the shop. All of those kind of maintenance complications go away and it becomes very, very difficult to justify buying a brand new gas powered sedan versus something as efficient and as affordable as a Model 3. But once we start comparing like an F-150 Lightning or a Cybertruck to gas powered trucks that are available, sure, there's definitely some lower maintenance cost and the all electric option will be faster. It'll have great torque control and it'll certainly be quieter than the gas powered option. But once we start getting into the argument of cost, all of these electric trucks are basically averaging around two miles per kilowatt hour. Sometimes if the weather's good, you'll get 2.5 or 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. But for the most part, these big electric trucks just consume way more power. And that means you're paying more per mile, of course, than you would in a Model 3 and Model Y. And even when you're charging from home, if you're getting that little mileage per kilowatt hour, it starts to just not make that much sense to go electric. But that's why I'm personally very excited for the company that I'm working for right now, Tello Trucks, because I think they're basically acknowledging this problem that, hey, battery energy density and EV manufacturing hasn't reached a point yet where it makes sense to build all electric trucks this big. They're just too dang heavy, they're too expensive, and they're not efficient enough. So what if we redesign the pickup truck for the electric era and made it substantially smaller while not compromising on the practicality? Just to be clear, I know a lot of people may not believe me, but I would not have said yes to any company that wanted to hire me. I wouldn't have said yes to Fisker. I wouldn't have said yes to Faraday Future. I wouldn't have said yes to Lordstown either. I'm not on board with just working and helping promote any EV company for the sake of it being electric. It has to be different. It has to be unique. And it has to separate itself from everything else on the market for me to get personally invested and excited by it. And the Tello truck was revitalizing the mini truck market, which has been mostly forgotten in the United States. 
and was certainly built around how do we make an all-electric truck more efficient so that it actually starts to make sense with operating costs compared to gas pickup trucks there's a lot of advantages to going electric you know quieter less maintenance better acceleration better traction control and of course not having to go to a gas station anymore and being able to recharge from home but i still don't feel like most of the electric truck offerings on the market today are fully taking advantage of what an all-electric powertrain can be that means fitting a ton of horsepower into a much smaller form factor and it doesn't necessarily have to be this giant behemoth on the road tello has discovered that yes you can make a safe and practical vehicle that fits in the form factor of a two-door mini cooper and still have a five-foot bed that extends to eight with the midgate down that can still have well over 300 miles of range they're targeting 350 with a full-size battery pack at 106 kilowatt hours which sounds like a lot but it's substantially less than a lot of the battery packs you see in today's big giant electric trucks and again those big guys are averaging around two to two and a half miles per kilowatt hour tello truck is talking way over three much closer to three and a half miles per kilowatt hour which puts it about on par with a lot of performance you know all-wheel drive model y's out there so similar efficiency to what one of the more popular all-electric crossovers can get but it's also a pickup truck with all-wheel drive great approach and departure angles 10 inches of ground clearance and a nice big durable bed with 110 outlets and 220 volt plugs in the back so you can power accessories appliances still get all that kind of use case out of what a full-size pickup truck offers in a much smaller much more affordable price bracket and i think the efficiency is really the key here making sure that it's cheaper to maintain in the long haul than a gas vehicle is really a crucial part of the equation of getting people to switch over to electric i don't think we're just going to convince people by saying it's faster and it's quieter and it's better for the environment which of course it is but it has to also make economic sense for people to consider switching and i feel like tello is exploring this avenue much more than any other company and that's why i'm very proud to be part of the team and there's a lot of exciting content in the works over on that channel so please make sure you check out tello trucks if you're excited for what all electric platforms can unlock in regards to practicality and footprint and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly it seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again have an excellent rest of your day